How's that switch going? How's that? Oh, I wish I could explain the anxiety in my body when I texted you. Because by the time I bought, because you buy like the Nintendo Switch, you buy, I don't even know what OLED stands for. It's O-L-E-D, but it stands for like the screen. But it's dope because you can, like I was playing it on my actual TV. So you can like pop it in a thing. It goes on to jumbo screen and then you can just like have the controllers. But by the time Mm -hmm. everything was said and done between the game and then that, I was $500 deep. So I was already like butt cheeks puckered a little like, okay, (laughs) like this isn't the anxiety of buying like an Xbox or a PlayStation, but like we're we're close, right? So then when you texted me and you were like Diablo beta and I was like, I didn't see this text. Like this, this text message <laughs> did not find me well. I didn't see it. I didn't. Um, so I was, I was dying. But it's actually funny uh, for those that don't know. My oldest brother is a video game designer, and so my brother is so much older than me that we have. I want to say we have trouble bonding sometimes, but it's like quite literally. I'm about to be 34. My brother is like 12 years older than me, and so it's like. Sometimes, you know, it's just like comparing apples to oranges. And uh, my brother is a pretty quiet guy anyway. But so I was like texting him, trying to get info about Zelda. And then I felt like a dummy because I was like, oh, hey, like any chance you've played the Zeldas on the Nintendo Switch? And he was like, what type of question is that? And I was like, oh, no, (laughs) because he's very like sarcastic, like dry humor kind of guy. And he's like, I mean, I had 120 hours. So, I mean, I guess I played it. And I was just like, oh, That's right. funny. But um, it's crazy. I haven't played since 64. So, I don't, yeah. I haven't okay. played since the Ocarina of Time. Oh, wow. So, I played yeah. Twilight Princess, which I don't know if that oh, was. Oh, yeah. Was that yeah. GameCube? Yeah, that was 64. Or, no, that, that was 64. I think it was the Nintendo Wii, actually. Um, oh, I don't know, man. Yeah, because I played Majora's yeah. Mask and then that. But... Long story short, uh, what a smart business model because there's these things called amiibos. And so basically, they're little statues that you buy. And so when you buy them, you get a little code that you then enter in the game that like unlocks weapons or like clothing or this and that. So like I'm looking at these and my brother like sent me a picture of his set, which was like 11 billion. And I'm like, yo, that's got to be like $1,000 right there for, for all the figures because like... I guess they retail for like 20 bucks, but obviously there's like a limited number. So people are like reselling eBay, the whole thing. So I was just like looking at this today and I was like, damn, like I do want better weapons, but I'm about to spend more money, right? Uh, so I don't know. How was, uh, how was Diablo? Yeah. N- N- Nintendo's always been very smart with like marketing and business. I don't know. I, I watched this movie called Tetris. It was about the Tetris game like how it became like uh like they stole it from the Russians or something like that. I don't know. But like, yeah, no, it was like, like the KGB was involved and all this stuff. And uh, yeah, it was actually quite, quite an interesting movie. But um, yeah, Nintendo's always been very, very smart with business. How, uh, how was Diablo? Uh, you know, they, they put it back to like the Diablo 2 uh, type. I think, I think they Ooh. made it more um, like, yeah, like, I think they made it to get a little bit more hardcore. Um, I think Diablo 3 was probably a little bit too easy, too cheesy. Yeah. Um, and Diablo 2 was uh, was a lot more difficult. And then, um, so that this one, Diablo 4, yeah, I was playing and I was playing on like, I guess like, what is the second difficulty? They only let you go up to like the second difficulty so far. And it was kicking my ass. Like I was getting <laughs> like, and, and the, you have to actually, you have to actually think about your build. Like in Diablo 3, like it was pretty much just given to you. Like they gave right. you the the skills, skills, but now you have a lot more customization and things like that. It's actually, you have to think about it a lot more. So huh. yeah. Yeah, I don't know Diab- if I'll pre-order because I don't like pre- pre-ordering anything uh, just in case things go south. But like, I, you know, I'll probably buy it. I mean, we'll I, I already, <laughs> I bought like whatever, I don't even know. I feel like games are so expensive these days. Side note, like I'm glad I'm an adult because I think, I want to say Diablo was like near triple digits. Yeah. It was like no, It's 80, like 70 80, bucks. Yeah, yeah, 70, 80 say, bucks. Yeah, 89. Yeah, that, um, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's always kind of how, how it's been for AAA 
type games, but yeah, Diablo. Yeah. Uh, you know what? We should we should start a gaming podcast. By the way, like side. <laughs> like, let's add another thing to our. <laughs> Eli was like, "Yo, y'all, y'all want to start like a Twitch account?" <laughs> I was like, "I mean, as a as a okay looking female, that might uh <laughs> maybe that's my claim to fame." Shit. Yeah, just uh, wear a bikini. It'll be all good. You start the money. <laughs> the money comes in at that point. <laughs> I was gonna say like only fans, but like only games, only only yeah. video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what's up, y'all? Thanks so much for tuning in uh, this week. I'm pretty excited about this topic because this is actually something that I have definitely been struggling with as of late. And it's very interesting because we can do self-work and we can we can improve our relations and uh, you know, kind of the way that we interact and uh, kind of sit with things like nutrition and fitness and body image. And it's such a fascinating thing to me that we can still, you know, it's like we think we do the self-work and then sure enough, you you have the right situation, you're like back at it. And so uh, it's interesting to me because long story short, the first four to six weeks post-surgery, honestly, it, it just was it was fine. Like, yes, it was a lot of pain, but like I wasn't having any ill or negative feelings towards my body. And then I've really been struggling with kind of body image, just feeling comfortable in my skin, feeling comfortable in my clothes, feeling comfortable in me, uh, especially this last week or two. And I don't know if it's just like because it escaped me for four to six weeks. It was like, how about? Uh, But we are deep in the struggle right now of just like I said, feeling feeling not so great in our skin. And so I thought, dang, what a great topic to kind of talk about. What do you do when your body changes size, when it changes shape, when it changes weight? Um, How do we navigate bad body days? How do we navigate when we don't like how clothes fit? Um, Maybe when we outgrow our clothes or reversely, you know, when clothes become too big on us, it just seemed like a really great topic because, you know, at the end of the day, like our body is not a photograph and it's meant to change. And especially when we're going through surgery or any sort of injury uh, where we're taking time off the gym, we're recovering from a thing. Well, of course, you know, we're we're going to see changes, some good, some bad, you know, some whatever it is. And so how do you how do you navigate that? And so um, I think especially, you know, we kind of have two sides of the coin because it's like Alex is somebody that, you know, partied a lot in college, definitely weighed a lot more than he does now. And I've kind of always been on the opposite end of just coming from eating disorder and being too tiny. And so Ironically, uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now is it's, I just feel very small and I feel very tiny and I feel very not muscular. And uh, it's just not my favorite because I do enjoy being muscular. I enjoy feeling and looking athletic and, and feeling strong and all of that stuff. So um, that being said, where do you want to start with this, Alex? Well, I want to ask you, like, so, you know, with what's been kind of going on with you, like, you know, I know you, you know, for people maybe that don't know, you had, you've had some health issues and, you know, you've had to have some surgeries and you, you've taken, how long have you been like kind of out your normal? Yeah. So this is, we're now going into month six. So, uh, basically. That is unheard of for you. I've known you for what, like almost seven years. And this is unheard of for you to take that much long, that long Bro, Off. like yeah. slow, painful death. And like I said, it's like it, it it really was okay. Like I think I was at peace with it because it was just like, yo, yeah. I, like I'm not in control. There's literally nothing I can do to like make this better. I'm like the getting back to doing what I love. Uh, and so it's like, ironically, I am easing back into the gym. You know, I've been lifting a little bit mm. here and there and in two weeks from now, I'll officially be cleared. So I will be able to go back to lifting overhead. We don't, or I'm going to say shouldn't. (laughs) We shouldn't have to worry about any more blood clots. Uh, All of the thoracic outlet stuff is is good because we did the surgery that would correct root cause. I can't talk today, root cause. Uh, And so I think part of it is I'm having the anxiety of living in the future because I have to do surgery on the other side as a preventive. 
so that I don't get blood clots on that side. So basically, I have the same anatomical issues on the other side. It's very unheard of to have to do thoracic outlet syndrome (laughs) surgery on both sides, and I'm that person. And so I have to do it also within this year because I've hit my deductible. I've hit my insurance. Like We we have paid $11 million, so like we got to keep going. And so it's very fascinating because I'm in control of okay, when do I want to have that surgery? Like we do have to make sure like I make a full recovery, which it seems like that is indeed going to be the case. Um, You know, some people can end up dealing with long-term nerve damage or this and that. And so, you know, it's like all things are smooth sailing on that department, but I'm having the human experience of like, I know that it doesn't serve me to live in the future and think about like, oh, can't wait to be in pain again. Oh, can't wait to like not be able to dress myself, you know, just all, all the things. And I've been there. <laughs> and like I said, it's like, I haven't figured out, uh, you know, I haven't figured out a good off switch for that. Um, so it's, yeah, for basically the past five to six months. So I've been very stop and go with fitness where it'd be like, okay, like I consistently haven't trained upper body, which is my favorite thing to train. It's the thing that I pride myself most on is like, I really enjoy having a really strong and muscular and like looking upper body. Uh, and I think it's just, again, it's like, you can also skate by for a while. And then now it's finally starting to happen where it's like, okay, upper body's looking pretty soft. Okay, upper body's not looking how I really prefer it to look. And um, like, mm. what uh, what are you going to do except like sit in it and have some feelings about it? But uh, it, like I said, you, it's like, it is it is fascinating to me as someone that's done so much work in this department and and you can just, oh, right back in there. And, and you know, it's not that that work didn't work before, but it is continual self-work, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. just kind of, kind of double checking myself and uh, just, just, just scraping by. That's what we're going to say. So, scraping by. <laughs> yeah. So like what, what kind of things like, do you like, what kind of thoughts come up for you when you're, when you're having these days? So I will say, and I think at first it was easier because I was just so grateful for my body initially, right? It's like, Mm. holy shit, man, like you've kept me alive. We're doing hard things. We just went through a very gnarly surgery. Like I'm so grateful. And it's not that those feelings have disappeared, but like I said, you know, it's like now we're kind of integrating back to real life. And so it's a little harder to like hug that really tight. Uh, Like it was a little bit easier initially. And so I think for me, um, you know, it's equal parts. I'm like, okay, Grace, like this is, this is where we are at. I actually keep coming back to our conversations with our friend Tiana when we podcasted with her quite a bit. And so quick recap, uh, when we interviewed her, she was basically talking about how she navigates body change when she's going through bigger competitions and going from the extremes of, for her, uh, weighing upwards of like 160, 170, and then on stage being down between like the 130s to 140s. And so she talked about this idea of having different outfits. And when clothing loan, you know, no longer serves us, well, we have to put on a different outfit and we have to change our clothes and we have to change you know, our mindset. And so that has been something that I keep coming back to on those days that it's just like we are going out to see on what I would describe as like the body spiral of just like, oh man, not loving how this fits. So, you know, in my world, when I'm having a bad body day where I want to start is like, okay, how can I just feel good in clothes? Because if you're squeezing into something, you're not going to feel good. If it's something that's not flattering you at this moment in time. So in my situation, I actually still weigh the exact same as I did, you know, four to six weeks ago, but I've lost a lot of muscle. And so things aren't fitting the same way, especially like shorts right now are a struggle for me uh, because that's where Mm -hmm. I lose like body fat first is it's like my ass, my my legs are just like, bye girl. Um, And so it's like my legs. Oh no, not according to the commenter (laughs) on that that one post that you had. (laughs) I needed that comment. Uh, (laughs) Somebody... I don't even know what, but uh, oh, it was the hiking post. Somebody commented and basically was like, yo, that booty though. It's like, uh, 
Oh my god! Shout out to that person. I I needed that little. Uh, you made inter- her day. You made her day. <laughs> Need that internet squeeze that day. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like clothing just isn't fitting me the same right now, and so. On days that I am just, uh, we've talked about this before, but it's like, especially if stress is really high, we tend to nitpick on our body. Yeah, or we, that, we you know, pick ourselves apart for and, sure. And that's yeah. where we deflect it. And so uh, lately, you know, that's that's been something where it's just like been feeling very burnout on work stuff. I've just been been feeling very burnt out on everything, to be honest. And so um, stress has been you know, a little bit higher, even though it should be like, oh, you're going back to the gym. You're getting back to the things you love. Uh, but you know, it's like I found myself just kind of nitpicking or wishing my body didn't look a kind of way. And so kind of pressing pause on how I'm feeling and just being like, okay, we need to get dressed it's okay that you're not feeling yourself and whatever you just tried on, but like, let's just keep changing outfits until we figure out, you know, what we feel good in. And so obviously, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like if clothes are very tight fitting, they're really compressive, they're really squeezing. eh, It's probably not the clothing you want to be in if you're maybe not feeling yourself that day. And so it's like finding, like I talked about this on Instagram recently was it's like, if I'm going to the gym, I've been wearing a lot of long sleeve shirts or like hoodies or stuff like that. And thank goodness that's not super hot in the gym, but it just keeps me on track in the gym in terms of like, yo, I'm here to lift. I'm here to work out. I'm not here to like look in the mirror and then start spiraling about my body like mid workout. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like figuring out what are the things that I feel good in right now? What are the things that are maybe a little more loose fitting, a little more flowy? Uh, Again, things like hoodies are like my BFF right now because I just, you know, you're not seeing it and therefore you're not giving yourself kind of that, that room or that space or permission to kind of obsess about it and nitpick about it. Um, so that's been something I've been doing a lot is like reorganizing my closet, even especially like the weather is finally starting to get a little warmer in California too. So it was like the other day it was like, okay, what is in my closet right now? What do I feel good in? What fits good? And if it's not that, I literally just will put stuff in like a Lululemon toe or some sort of box and then just literally save it for a different day, right? So it's like uh, putting it in our spare closet of like, hey... It, you know, just like you would winter, you know, like winter clothing and stuff. It's like, you're not really rocking that. So same thing, you know, it's like, hey, this isn't fitting me in the season I'm in. I'm sure we'll be back there soon as I continue to get back to exercise and lifting and uh, doing all of that stuff. But right now you don't get to be here, right? Uh, because it is, you know, it's that's self-defeating if you're also just like going through your closet being like, uh, like I don't want to wear any of this. It doesn't look good. Um, it's like kind of slimming down your options. Yeah, it's like too. always in your face, right? Like it's it's always a reminder uh, that that you know, oh, I don't fit in these clothes. I think that's a really great idea. Like going through your stuff, inventorying. Okay, what fits well? What doesn't fit well? Uh, taking the stuff that doesn't fit well and just setting it aside for for at least right now temporarily, right until you know you are back to where you want to be. Totally. And it's like, I think too, uh, like Coach Kate from Paragon and I were talking about this, but it's like, uh, you kind of have your sizes for stuff, right? So it's like, oh, well, if I'm bulking right now, okay, well, then I tend to be, you know, these size leggings or these size tops. And then same thing, you know, it's like, well, if you're doing like a hypertrophy cycle, or if you're doing a strength cycle, or if you're cutting, you know, it's like, you kind of end up having this range of clothing. Like for me, it's basically between like three different sizes at Lululemon, like, boop, boop, boop. Um, but kind of just <laughs> knowing that like sizes are are transient in that way, right? Where it's like, it's not bad that your body's changing. It's just like whatever in your body is going to reflect also the inputs that you're giving it. So we shouldn't expect, you know, if we're doing different cycles in the gym or we're training, you know, different ways. Well, yeah, like the clothing that we fit into is also going to change. And so having, you know, those different categories, I think is super helpful. Because I think for so many people, it's like they just have their clothes and then that's it. And it's like, oh, again, like the the body don't work like that. I I think a lot of people um, sometimes are, are mentally married to a size, right? Like, they like I've oh I've always worn you know a medium or I've always worn a size four or whatever like they're married to a size and the thing is is that one um, 
yeah, your body's going to change size depending on what you're doing or the time of the, the, the phase of life that you're in. And then two, I mean, uh, Bethany, our friend Bethany made a really good, really good Instagram post, but like, I, I don't know how it is. Guys, guys clothes usually aren't like this, but it seems like women's clothes are more so like this where it's like different brands will have like different sizes. Like there's no standard in terms of like what size it actually is, which is wild to me because how do you shop? Uh, <laughs> like, let me know. tell like, you, do you, do you don't. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, she the, the post was like, all these clothes fit her, but they were all different sizes. Like some was like, it was like the whole entire range, like small to large or like a size two to a size six. Like it was, it was all these different ranges of sizes. So like, you can't be married to a number because it's literally, it's made up almost, it seems like. Well, and I talk about this all the time. It's like, if I go clothing shopping, like let's just say I go to a place like Lululemon, I can quite literally be a six. I can be a four. I can be a two. I can be a zero. Depending on what it is. Depending yeah. on what it is. But even within styles. So like, let's say I'm shopping for a sports bra. I could be a size two in a certain style of sports bra. And then usually I'm actually like a size six. Like, And, and that's been for years and years. And even like before I had fake boobs, like it was literally just like back and shoulders <laughs> filling it out, right? And so I think part of it is what I've heard is that, you know, it's like... I think there's this desire to be in smaller clothing sizes. And so certain stores have probably like capitalized on that where it'd be like, oh yeah, mm. like size, you know, like whatever, size small, size medium. And you're like, ah, like that. Wait, what? Um, Cause I, I run into that quite a bit as somebody that's just naturally a tinier human is it's like, I might order the smallest size available. And then it's quite literally still too big. And you're like, cool. Like what, what am I supposed to do? Right. And I, I think the answer is I just like need to start getting stuff tailored. I need to find like a little, little seamstress or something, but like, I, I mean, it's, it's a jungle, man. It is a jungle when it comes to women's yeah. clothing sizes and fit sizes. And like, it is. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a tailor, but I have heard and, and seen that piece of advice given out like a lot. Like if you can find like a really good tailor to alter some of your clothes. Um, like if, like if, for instance, if you, sometimes if you lose a bunch of weight, um, you know, you may, you may need to take your clothes in. Um, and so you can get them altered and you can take them down a couple of sizes. Like, I don't know what it is about me, but I guess every time that I, go on a bulking cycle or I'm heavier or bigger, I go buy my nice like dress clothes and then and then I get down to like a lower like like where I am now and I like can't wear any of my nice clothes. Like I bought a really nice <laughs> suit like a couple years ago to go to a wedding. I love this suit. Is it the blue anymore, one? Because yeah, it's that blue one. It's that blue one. I mean it's like the one suit that I own. Like I don't dress up, but it's like really suave, right? And I put it on, tried to try it on the other day. And literally, it was like the subway, you know, the sub, like the the Weight Watchers ads, like we're just pulling out the pants. Like I, I, I it doesn't fit. So I'll, I'll have to get it. I think I'll have to try to get it altered because I'll probably stay around this weight. But yeah, I mean, getting a tailor or something like that, getting your clothes altered can be a can be a good option. Totally, and it's like when you're going shopping, my best suggestion is like grab a multitude of sizes. So like I said, like if we go back to like the Lululemon thing, it's like, okay, if I'm trying a new style or maybe even just again, like something I haven't worn in a while, I will literally grab basically like three different sizes. And I start with the biggest size mm. that I grab in my hand because it's like, well, you don't, <laughs> you want to like, you want to get stuck in something, right? So it's like, whatever the yeah. largest or the bigger of the sizes you grab, start there and then try on all the sizes so you can just literally figure out, okay, this is what fits. Um, because even things like that I've learned from doing screen printing and apparel drops is that the color of a fabric changes the fit. It changes the stretchiness. It changes the overall texture. I did not so, know that. So, for example, let's roll. Uh, if we're talking about sports bras, if you have a black sports bra, typically those are going to be more stiff and they're going to be less stretchy because that fabric is dyed. Whereas... If like, and again, this isn't always. Um, I'm doing a lot of hand talking today. <laughs> Hello, um, <laughs> but if you are looking then at sports bras that are like white, neon yellow, really bright, fun colors, 
those typically are going to be more stretchy. They're more forgiving. And so it has equal parts to do with the color of the fabric. Uh, Same thing, like think about the black camo hoodies or t-shirts that we print. Those are typically very stiff because there's so much pigment jammed into those hoodies. Mm. Therefore, they just fit a little bit tighter. They're not as forgiving. Um, So that's something that can be frustrating too is like, you might have the same exact style, but maybe you buy like a white t-shirt and a black t-shirt and then they end up fitting a little bit different and it's due to stuff like that. Uh, so same thing, you know, it's like it, <laughs> it's a jungle. <laughs> that, that's basically, that is that is my summary recap is clothing is a jungle. But truly, you know, it's like trying on a multitude of sizes so that you can just pick whichever one you feel best in, whichever one looks the best, I think is huge. And like sometimes if I'm undecided, I will literally step outside the dressing room and be like, hey, person at the store, like which one looks better in your opinion? I think it's this one. But like, also tell me if I don't know, you know, it's like for girls, it's like if your back is like over, you know, overflowing onto your sports bra, it's like back muffin top, right? But it's like, well, maybe I need to know that. Like if that's happening, like, let me know, right? So like sometimes if I'm undecided to, I'll actually ask somebody in the store like, hey, in your opinion, which do you think is the most flattering on me? And and again, you know, it's like people are always happy to help. And also they'll be like, yo, you look great. Uh, so it's yeah, kind of like yeah. a double, double ding, like low warm fuzzy, right? <laughs> plus, plus like fitting room lighting is so bad. I don't know why, who designs fitting rooms, but the the ones at Lululemon, especially Awful. Just anywhere, any fitting room lighting are terrible. Tragic. It's like that. Like, it, it, makes, it makes everything look so much worse. So like going outside the fitting room is actually probably pretty smart if you want to actually see like what you actually look like. (laughs) 100. You know, where's the worst? And I haven't been there in years. Victoria's Secret is like tragic level 10,000. Like cancel that lighting because it's it's the same. 100%. It doesn't make any sense. To me, I would feel like you would want the best lighting if you're going to be in like underwear, you know? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but hot tip from uh, Alex Macklin, the nutrition fitness yeah. coach, right? Like, oh. uh, yeah. Yeah. where interesting question. So, as a dude, where are your favorite places to shop for athletic wear? Like, are you mostly Lululemon or are you doing like 10,000, um, anything like that? No, no, I, you know, I'm, I'm very frugal when it comes <laughs> to clothes. Uh, I, I personally don't, you know, shop all that much. Um, but I buy a lot of stuff from Target. Like, really? I buy, okay. I buy a lot, yeah, I buy I buy a lot of my. I mean, this T-shirt I'm wearing, like, um, I buy it from Target. They're like they're like five bucks. Um, I bought some nice like shorts, some athletic shorts, athleisure shorts from Target for like twenty bucks. I like, love they have, that. They have good stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, is with with. Uh, you know, you're going to get what you pay for. Um, but actually, I feel like Target has some really good quality clothes. Like, you know, I don't I don't have any issues with like them breaking down or anything like that. Um, and they're all super comfortable and then they don't they don't cost a whole lot. So, you know, I think if you're, uh, you know, changing sizes quite often and you do need to change your wardrobe, um, you know, look into some you know, lower cost options. I mean, you know, if you're having to buy a high volume of clothes, it's probably going to be more economical to look into some lower cost options. But if you're not needing to buy a whole lot of clothes, you might want to look in the opposite and look for more quality um, because, you know, those clothes are typically going to last longer. Um, But uh, yeah, I mean, I do my shopping at Target. (laughs) Target. Yeah, I I used to be, man, I used to be so like, oh, I got to have name brand, got to wear all this like stuff. And like when I, when I became an adult and had to start paying my own bills, that's when things changed. (laughs) So So. it's interesting because my dad is actually the same way. It's like, if I'm going to buy something and I think it just comes back to like, I hate, I hate being disappointed or I hate like wasting Time, I, like in general, I hate wasting time. I hate wasting energy. So if I'm going to take the time to purchase something, I would rather have like one pair of jeans that I just like slam dunk, feel like a 12 in, fit me really well uh, mm-hmm. versus I've... And I don't know also if it's just like anatomy because it's like short torso, really long legs. 
you again, it's like up until the last few years, like didn't have any boobs whatsoever, like double (laughs) negative A cup. Uh, And so I've always just struggled so hard fitting in clothes. Like even as a kid, like God bless it. Like I literally used to have to get like my gymnastics leotards tailored because I would be like, well, need them this long, but then the crotch would like be too big. So you'd have to like sew it. Like I, as a kid, I never fit in clothes either. So it's like, I'm definitely just like, if I find something that fits my body and it's awesome, like I'm, I'm down to invest in it. And I would rather have mm-hmm. one thing. Um, I was just literally thinking about when we moved from Newport down to San Diego, I was talking about how in college, I would ball in a budget. And so I think I found Lululemon in 2012. Uh, Previously, I was always wearing brands like Nike or like Under Armour and stuff like that. And so I went to, there was like a Lululemon warehouse sale. And so I think I had like been to Seattle, visit my sister, uh, sister-in-law, excuse me, saw a bunch of clothes. And I was like, yo, these are dope. But like, I don't have this price tag. Like, what is this? Right. And so that's how I used to basically navigate it in college is that I would have essentially like a capsule wardrobe where it'd be like, hey, I go to the gym five or six days a week. So I have like five to six sports bras. I have, you know, like two to three pairs of leggings. I have a couple pairs of shorts. Like at the time I lived in Illinois, which means it's humid and it's hotter than like Satan's ball sack. Um, So, (laughs) you know, it's like need a little medley there of like, well, it's going to be negative 40 in the winter, but also, you know, it, it gets hot here. And so I had such a tiny wardrobe where it was like exactly what I needed. But so the catch was, if I wanted to buy something new, well, I had to resell it. And I was going to mm. also be, you know, like I basically lived on like Poshmark, uh, Mercari, they're like Facebook groups when it comes to Lululemon. I know there's one's present day for like Noble Project, uh, Born Primitive, Fleo. Yeah, I think a lot uh, of the, like, the athletic brands have resale mm-hmm. groups on Facebook. And yeah. like it does, it take, it can take a while to like find your size or find the color that you're looking. But like that was basically my system was it was like, yo, I can't afford to like buy a new sports bra or, oh, I really want this new thing that came out, but like I'm not buying it full price. And so that's what I would do is I would like live in these Facebook groups and I would like sell one thing and then be like, okay, now we got the funds. Now we can buy the new thing. And I mean, I did that literally through college. And then, you know, of course now it's like definitely because I, (laughs) you know, normally live at the gym and I I love being, you know, again, it's like, even when I got into jobs, it was like, you know, if I can't wear athleisure, like it it ain't the job for me. Right. Um, so it's like, you know, definitely, but yeah, I've been pretty, I'm pretty loyal to Lululemon because I think too, the thing I see a lot with leggings, and I think this is also where it's like harder being a, a female is it's like, If you have cheaper leggings, sometimes they can make your body look unflattering in ways that if you're just wearing nicer fabrics or nicer brands, you don't have those same problems. So like uh, the example that's coming to mind is it's like, let's say you're wearing leggings that are a brighter color. Well, you might see cellulite, you might see little lumps or bumps or rolls, but then, you know, you, you do if you switch to a nicer brand the fabric just fits differently, sits differently, stuff like that. So that's like one thing. um, Or even like, man, you think about like sitting down at the bottom of a squat. You want to know if your leggings are translucent (laughs) at the (laughs) bottom. Like You want to know if you've given the world a show, right? So it's like, (laughs) I do. I I feel like that's like a jungle that dudes don't have to navigate is it's like, yo, we got to make sure like our our stuff's not see-through when we're, (laughs) when we're squatting, when we're bending over. Cause man, like whether it's at a CrossFit gym, whether it's at, you know, yoga, like God bless, like, and and again, how would you know? Cause it's not like you can like bend over and look at your butt or something, right? Um, That's where you get the store associate, the sales associate (laughs) to help you out there. Like, get down to the bottom of the squat and be like, can you see my underwear in here? (laughs) Yo, can you... (laughs) Am I giving you a show right now? Yeah, so it's uh, I do. I I am the dudes one thousand percent because I feel like y'all sizing is way more consistent. I feel like y'all don't have to deal with so many things that you know, ladies. It's like it, it's fascinating. Even we just did an apparel shoot, and so um, our friend Carissa 
uh, you know, was basically the other model. And it's fascinating because it's like we would be wearing the same size on some stuff and it would look completely different. Like she's slightly taller than me and stuff like that. But it's like, it's just so fascinating how depending on if you have like short torso, long torso, do you have curves? Like I'm built like SpongeBob SquarePants. Like I, I have no hips. I have no curves. Uh, same thing, you know, do you have long legs? Do you have short legs? It's like, I can't imagine being like, oh, I make like sports bras. Oh, I make like, you know, like shorts or anything. Because uh, even with Carissa or even, you know, like Laura Savino, it's like they will wear the Lululemon like four inch leggings or not, excuse me, not leggings, uh, four inch like shorts. And they look like parachutes on me. Like it is almost cartoon how bad they look. And I'm like, no, I need like that two and a half inch seam, right? Uh, so if I, I wish I need somebody to basically make high waisted shorts that are then two and a half inch seam, like that's, if I can manifest that, that is what I need in life. <laughs> Noble does it in like their neon shorts. And I'm like, okay, I can't be a highlighter every day. Like, can we have some blacks <laughs> or greens or neutrals? Um but yeah, do you find any, is there any particular clothing that you really struggle with fitting into or anything like that? Or is it just like, nope, I just, I just pick stuff off a rack because like, I can't relate to that. I'm like, yo, let me try an 11 billion things and figure it um, out. I mean, I haven't really, I haven't really uh, found like any particular like clothing for me that's, that's difficult to like fit into. Um, but I do know like what I don't really like wearing and don't feel like I look good in. Like, um, you know, I, I'm not going to wear, uh, I'm not a big fan of like really super long t-shirts or just <laughs> anything that doesn't just accentuate my, my upper body physique. Right. Like I'm going to get t-shirts that look good on me. Right. And, um, you know, I know, I know like the baggy, the baggy look is in, but it that's is just, in. it's just not for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not for me. I don't, I, I don't look good. I don't look good in, in baggy clothing. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, and, or, or like, I'm a big fan. It's, it's about to be hoochie daddy season. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm a big fan of shorts. I love shorts, but we are not messing with anything longer than six, like five inches. Like it cannot be longer than five inches in seam. Like we are not doing it because the teardrop, that's where it's at. As somebody, I'm not, I don't even want to say it, but like somebody, <laughs> on my, somebody commented in my DMs like teardrop, make the panties drop. I'm no. like, I'm like, that I'm like, that's too much, bro. That's too much. But he, do, he <laughs> hey, you know, it's a good feature on me. So I'm going to wear, you know, shorts that I'm not going to be sitting there wearing like cargo shorts, you know, Dude. like that's just not a good look, man. <laughs> you know, so... I'll tell you what, people at the compound, like five <laughs> inches is too long. Like they, I, I actually want to know because like I've been seeing dudes literally like just below their junk. And I'm like, yo, I, like my <laughs> eyeballs right now. Like I love that you love this, but whew, I'm s sweating a little <laughs> over here. Because also it's like when you're doing stuff like bench pressing or when you're squatting, like, yo, you about to fall out of your shorts? So like, if I look the wrong time, we're going to have like, woo. Um, <laughs> I love Hoochie Daddy season. It is only ever <laughs> Hoochie Daddy season. Like Charlie looks excellent in five inch shorts. And so we canceled all other because he, he yeah, had no, you, no, we can't. If you, if you, if you do leg day, you better not be anything higher than five inch, yeah. five inch shorts. So you can't, you can't be doing that. Um, but yeah, so like going back to kind of like the body image stuff. Um, what do you what do you do if you're having like a bot like a bad body image day? Like what how do you how do you get through some of that? Like how do you get through some of those feelings? I think first things first is just like literally acknowledging that it's happening, right? So it's like, mm. you can be like kind of, it, you know, it's like for me, it'll be like, I'm getting ready, I'm getting dressed and I'm just not feeling myself. And that's not to say that my normal experience is like, I'm getting ready and be like, oh, I feel myself. But it's just like, like I said, you're like, oh, my hair's not the best today. And oh, like I'm wearing the same stuff I normally wear, but I'm just not, it's just not slapping like it normally does, right? Um, I don't want to give that narrative that like you should be looking in the mirror every day and just be like, yeah, which I mean, hey, maybe you should. Like may maybe that's the sauce. Uh, but it's just kind of the idea for me of being neutral and acknowledging when I'm kind of getting on 
the spiral bus is I think kind of where it's at. So acknowledging, oh, that's weird. Like I'm, I'm kind of picking myself apart today. And so yeah. I'm pressing pause to being like, what is this actually about? Because it's not about mm-hmm. my body, right? Like it, yeah, it literally one hundred percent. I mean, some of it so, probably is, but 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 like, there's other things going on. Well, you know? it's like uh, so. Like, obviously, if it was like, yo, you went out drinking, maybe you you dined out at a restaurant, you had a lot of Chinese food, like like yeah, maybe some days you do, you just wake up and you're like super bloated or super descended or or whatever. Then yeah, like sometimes it is actually just like, oh, my body is not in the state that it normally, you know. I'm accustomed to it being. Uh, But what I mean by that is like kind of just checking in to be like, yo, like I said, what are we actually stressing over? Is there something that's actually kind of weighing on me or kind of been living rent free in my head? And like I said, you know, it's 100% just been the stress of like, Ooh, okay. Um, you would think that anxiety or something like that would get better as you're like kind of get back into your team. But like, I think for me personally, knowing that I'm going to like just back up into another surgery, it's not even encouraging. Like I hoped it would be. I, I kind of have these feelings of being like, what's even the point? Like I, I, I'm in mm. kind of just feeling like the self-defeated thing. Cause it's like, man, how hard am I going to have to work after I get through surgery to get, you know, back to this place that I you know, personally enjoy kind of living in. And, and again, like that's not helpful either. Uh, but it is helpful to also just have feelings. So it's, it's just all the things of being like, okay, press pause, check in with ourselves. Is there anything else that this is actually more about? Yes, equal parts, my body is changing and it's okay for my body to do that as it should, you know, when when the inputs are are putting it where it is. Uh, But then it's kind of just redirecting my energy in a different way. And like I said, you know, it's like, okay, we're not going to spend all day having a pity party. We're not going to have, you know, spend the day having a bad day. So it's kind of almost like, you know, uh, almost like when you weigh yourself, right? It's like, sometimes you also just got to like stop weighing yourself. And so for me right now, where I'm at is like, you know, we've had enough feelings about this. So now it's time to just like move on and redirect our attention. And so I will say, you know, it's like I feeling, you know, a little bit burnout towards work and stuff like that. I've been trying to work less and I've been trying to pull back, which Mm. means we've got some boredom going on. And so it's just all the things of like, acknowledging it's totally okay to feel this way. But like, let's get busy again. Let's kind of keep ourselves so we don't just have all this spare time to, you know, to do all that. And so um, it's definitely we're just in the messy right now. And and I do think that it'll get better. But um, definitely, it's like also checking in myself where I'm like, okay, we've been through a lot the past six months, we haven't been to therapy, we should probably get back on the therapy bus for a little is also where I've been. Uh, so I need to spend a little time to find a good person for that because I actually haven't had a therapist in a minute. Um, my last one wasn't my favorite. So they're, they're getting cut mm-hmm. from the team. I, I want to find somebody new. But um, yeah, you know, it's just it, it, right now I'm just in a place of being like, it's okay to feel all the things you're feeling. Um, but like I said, we're, we're equal parts. All right. We, we got to keep going <laughs> like on, yeah. there's more to life. We, we gotta, we gotta get busy. Um, cause it is the gym stuff is hard right now. Cause it's like, I'm able to push on some of the leg day stuff. I'm not able to do upper body stuff for another couple of weeks. So it's like the gym has also quickly gotten stale of you're like, okay, well, I can only do like a couple movements. Shit. Right. Um, so mm-hmm. we, we definitely, we have a lot of social media posts that I probably just need to like unpack and be like, Hey, if anybody else yeah. is struggling with this, I got you, you know, we just know that you're not alone. Um, we've been, do you, do yeah. you, um, do you have like, I don't know. I mean, do you take like metrics or take data and stuff like that? Or is just you are you just going off based on how you're feeling or how things are looking? Yeah, because I haven't done I haven't done like a DEXA scan in years and years and years. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's also just like I'm beyond the point of stuff like that kind of mattering to me, if that makes sense. So it's like I have been for so many years, like kind of where I want to 
maintain and kind of stay at, right? Where it's like, I think for most people, it's like, I think maybe something within like, I don't know, say four to five pound is kind of probably a respectable bubble of it's like, yo, I can track my food. I cannot track my food. I can live life. I can, you know, dial it in, dial it out. And I can just easily like maintain where I'm at. And so, um, yeah, I, I am, I haven't done anything like take body measurements, um, even with the scale stuff, maybe hop on it, like, I don't know, once a week or something. And like I said, it's like actually way the same, <laughs> which, which is great. Cause then you're like, Oh, but your body composition <laughs> has changed. Yeah. 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 You're like, well, that's yeah. a lot of muscle. Bye. Um, yeah. And you're, and you're pretty in tune. It sounds like you were pretty in tune with like, where you are, how you, and and like what your body is doing. So you kind of know like, Hey, yeah, this is, these are changes that are happening. Yeah. Well, and like I said, it's like, uh, interestingly enough, shorts have been my thing. that I'm just like giving me the most grief right now because all of my compression shorts now like roll up on me because there's not like as much muscle as there was to like keep them mm. in place. So, uh, yeah, it's just like, not, like I said, none of my clothes are fitting quite right. And so just trying my best, uh, you know, I've gone out and bought a couple pieces too. And and again, you know, it's like when I'm trying on stuff, I don't have any ill feelings either way. If I try on something that like doesn't flatter me, I think you kind of made a great point earlier where it's like, you just got to learn what looks good on your body. (laughs) And there's certain, you know, necklines, there's certain, you know, like even where like shirts hit you or like different strap widths, different strap, uh, orientations. It's like, you got to know what looks good on your body. And I think that clothing shopping is really hard into you kind of problem solve through some of that. Um, for mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> Cause it's like, man, like if I ever want to have a bad time, it's like, uh, um, I definitely like dresses are a perfect example where it's like, we just got to like tube top it or like it, I do really well with like high neckline stuff. Uh, but other stuff you'd be like, Ooh, Ooh, that's not a vibe on you, LCK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I've I've talked to a lot of people sometimes, and they'll they'll go shopping and they and they have a bad experience, and like nothing. They were like saying like nothing fits or like nothing looks good on them. Well, like, like, what do you what do you have to say? Like, if if you had somebody come to you and said that, like, <sighs> I have a I have a lot of thoughts. So, like, my first thought hmm. also would be like, if you're gonna go shopping, I would also suggest go first thing in the morning. So it's like, think about what a different experience that's going to be if you have like a full like breakfast, lunch, dinner in you. And then you're like, I'm going to go shopping. It's like, well, now you're full of food and maybe you're feeling you know, yeah. feel a little whatever. You know, it's like that. That would be my first experience would be like, go get a cup of coffee, like hype yourself up. Uh, also see if you can take a friend with you, I think. Bring a hype woman. That's yeah, like say. literally. Bring a, hype woman. <laughs> bring yes. a, bring yes. a Charlie with you. Yes. <laughs> He's yes. so funny because it's like everything will be like, looks great. And I'm like, yo, like tell me if it looks whack. Like stop with that, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's like a same, a same thing. I mean, like even when you like you put up pictures and you're all dressy, like I'll be up in your DMs being like, yo, you look great man uh so yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would say like go get a cup of coffee like bring a hype man bring a hype woman uh you know bring somebody that's gonna tell you if you ain't looking so good but also like hype you up when you are looking good um but i think it's just like i said it's it's remaining neutral in terms of the clothes need to fit you, not the other way around. And so I don't ever struggle in that way of like beating myself up about clothing if it's not, if it's just not working. If it ain't at the fit, yeah. But Mm -hmm. I definitely used to be, right? And so it's like, I think that if we kind of use that as the mantra of like, okay, what are the fits that I know I look good in? Uh, Obviously, again, it's like if you're in a season where, Maybe you're bulking or we're just, you know, like we've gained a little bit of body fat or body weight. Maybe not going for things like crop tops. You know, again, like I said, it's like, well, if we're already uncomfortable in our skin, wearing longer lengths or again, things that are a little flowy or a little more forgiving in that way are probably going to, you know, be a little more successful than um, you know, if, if you can rack the crop top, that's great. But uh, for me personally, it'd be like, yo, I feel like Winnie the Pooh <laughs> would be like the, the mm-hmm. little narrative that'd be like, get out of my head. Like, why are we even thinking about that? Right. Um, 
So I would say, you know, those two things. But I think it's also just like I said, setting yourself up for success in terms of knowing what stores to go to is going to be huge because it's like, I think especially, I think finding athletic clothes when you lift is a little bit easier than if you're trying to find like real people clothes. So it's like where I see people struggle a lot is it's like, yo, I love my body when I'm in a swimsuit or I love my body when it's naked or I love my body like when I'm at the gym, but I am having the spiral when I try to find jeans or when I try to find a dress or wedding dress or whatever it is, right? And so it's like, I think that just knowing where to go for those types of things can be huge. So that's actually what I was trying to think. Um, so I'll see if I can, let's see if we can like quickly rattle rattle some things off. Um, when it comes to jeans for athletic bodies, I really love brand denim, F-R-A-N. Uh, I also love fit jeans. Again, sizing can get weird on all of those. So my suggestion would be know what your waist size is, and then that should probably help things fall into place. Um, most websites are going to have measurements in terms of like, yo, if this is the size of your waist you have, this is what size you should pick. Or like I said, both those companies, I'm pretty sure, actually just go off of waist size. So you're like, a, you know, uh, you, then you just need to know, you know, do I need long? Do I need short? Um, but same thing, you know, it's like with jeans, I feel like even jeans is hard because it's like, like skinny jeans on me, nightmare. <laughs> that is not, that ain't the look, that ain't the vibe for me. And I was so grateful in school when that like stopped being a thing. Cause it was like jeggings and skinny jeans was not, not it for me as somebody with like no torso and a pretty, pretty strong legs. When it comes to dresses, I would say check out places like Revolve. Uh, I know that Revolve can be a little bit of a poop show in terms of things can be really expensive or really affordable. Uh, But I would say look at places like Revolve. Um, A lot of t-shirts, if I'm just wearing like casual t-shirts and stuff like that, that's actually when I tend to lean into athleisure brands. So it'd be like Lululemon, Born Primitive, uh, Fleo. Um, what else is out there? Uh, Noble Project. I have a ton of tank tops from them. Um, so it just kind of, you know, yeah, it, it depends. But it's like, I want to push the line of like, how much else leisure wear can I wear? And like, have it look good, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, if you're talking about jean shorts, I would say Fran Denim, American Eagle, Abercrombie has had the glow up of the century. If you didn't know, <laughs> uh, both like a, uh, bo- even American Eagle kind of like leans that way too. Where it's uh, like, they're- yeah, Amer- uh, yeah, they have a, uh, I think the Airy brand. Um, yeah, but it's like all these all these brands we like grew up on are suddenly like. Yo, if we target adults and have a rebrand, what's up? Uh, but I do. I know a lot of people love rocking like jeans and shorts from American Eagle and Abercrombie. I would just say this, and this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I keep seeing this like same sentiment. But it's like I have a really hard time with the Amazon fashion that's like being pushed from people with like like it to know it, and obviously you can like share you know Amazon links, but it's like. The number of people that will be like, yo, I found this, what I thought would be really cute thing. Like this person I follow on TikTok was pushing it. So I ordered it and it did not look like that. Um, I think we have to be careful again about all of these kind of like fast fashion or just really cheap clothes. It's kind of like, a, like I said, I even as a kid, I wasn't into the brands kind of like H&M where it was like, well, it'll look really nice, but you can only wear it like five times and then your t-shirt going to like take a dump and like fall apart at the seams, <laughs> right? Like I've just never, that's never been my jam because like I said, if, I, if I'm going to buy it, I want to stay around for a while. Um, but I feel like that's a lot of Amazon fashion that I keep seeing. But like I said, similar sentiments of like, yeah, like this person I follow was like pushing this swimsuit or this top. And then I got it in person. It was tragic. And I returned it. I feel like we're seeing, seeing that a lot lately. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, like I said, I'm going to just go back to, I hope in my next lifetime, I'm a dude. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it's so much I mean, easier. <laughs> Guys, guys get, I mean, I've had my fair share of, of body image woes sometimes. I mean, I think guys, guys go through it too, for sure. It's, I think it's, it's not as, uh, women are constantly 
uh, judged based on their appearance. And it sucks because, like, I mean, there's a lot more to a person than what they look like, you know? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I definitely have had my share of body image woes. Yeah. So, like, let's get into that. Like, if you, let's say you're having just bad body day, having a menti B, like, what's, what is kind of. <laughs> 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 I really just wanted to use that phrase. I realized we hadn't used it on the podcast yet. <laughs> but but truly, it's like if, if you're having a bad body day, kind of what does your process of navigating through that look like? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, um, the biggest thing that I've noticed when I have, you know, bad body days uh, is just more, there's something else usually going on. Um, there's other kinds of stressors in my life or uh, maybe I'm I'm not um, doing the things that I normally do and I'm out of routine. Um, and that generally, you know, sends me to a place of like, oh, like I don't look as good um, or I don't look like I normally look. Um, but this is why I'm like, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of just taking data. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't like to take data, but I'm a very logical person, engineer, right? Um, and I will look at the data and see that nothing has changed. Like nothing. Um, same size, same weight, everything is the same. So this is merely a perception thing. It's in my mind. It's in my head. Um, and there are definitely, there are definitely top points in times like, okay, in your situation, like, yeah, if I was in your situation, and I hadn't trained for six months. Yeah, there would definitely be some like physical changes. And, and you know, that would be and being in denial if I didn't, you know, acknowledge that. But what, what I often find for at least myself and even for clients that I've had, like nothing changed in a span from last week to this week. It's just really more like how you're feeling about maybe something else that's going on in your life or you're or having like a lot of stress or like a lot of anxiety about something. And then your body <laughs> is like the easy target. It's the easiest target that we see. Um, and it's really easy to pick apart. And I think that's where you have to kind of catch, I at least I have to catch myself and like recognize when these oh, I'm having these thoughts and recognize that like, hey, these are, is this true? Is this actually true? No, I have evidence to say that it's not true. And so that's kind of where I tend to gravitate to think about when I'm having like bad body image days. And then if, if I know that it's not true, that's when I start asking myself, what's actually bothering me? And figuring out what's actually bothering me and then asking myself, what can I actually do about it? What can I control? Um, what can I start taking action on? Um, and then that's where I'll start focusing my energy on rather than like picking apart what I'm looking like. I'll focus my energy on things that I can control, things that I can do that make me feel good. Totally. Well, cause it's like, I think that's super common too, where it's like, let's say you get back pictures or like, let's say you're on vacation and, and there's pictures being taken. Right. And it's like, how easy is that to like look at a picture that maybe it's just not the right angle or whatever it is? And again, you know, it's like you see that picture and then people are like, oh, I need to diet. Oh, I need to like X, Y, Z. And so I think again, like it's, that's also good too, to just like, uh, like I said, it's like if we're in the midst of a spiral, being able to just like press pause is so important to give us that time of just like, okay, is this true? Do I need to take action? Is there action to right. be taken here? And if there is, you know, hey, that's okay too. Um, it's like pictures, man. Pictures are so yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, like, I mean, I've, I've definitely had my share of experience with that, like looking at a picture and I'm like feeling like, oh, like whatever. But, you know, again, it's like the lighting makes a difference. Like the angle that which you're standing makes a difference. But indeed, if you truly if you truly see something that you don't like, right, physically about yourself, well, what can you do about it? What are you able to change about it? And I don't think the thing to do is to start shitting on your on yourself, right? To just be like, 
you know, talking shit, right? Like that's not going to motivate anybody to change. Like when has that ever done anything for anybody? So like, I, I know it sounds like super cliche, but it's like, hey, let's not, let's give ourselves some compassion. Let's give ourselves some grace, but let's not like, Let's not talk shit to ourselves to try to motivate us to fucking change because that's not going to actually work the way you think it's going to work. No. <laughs> that just like reminded me of somebody's post on the Instagram. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> we're, we, uh, we, we, ain't, we're, we're, we ain't touching that today. But no, but it's like, <laughs> I mean, we could, I could, we could talk about it, but maybe not. But like, it's again, it's like, because we know this, we know this person, right? But yeah. it's like, you're you're not going to shame yourself into changing. And I don't know, there's countless, countless the article studies that shaming does not work. It no. doesn't work in terms of making someone truly motivated to change. Well, and it, it, doing things in a sustainable way and stuff like that too. It's just... Um... Shame ain't the way. <laughs> Just it ain't yeah. the way. Um, I'm trying to think what other things we could throw in the pot here, but I feel like we've hit a lot of them. Um, is it's just like I think a like I said, just coming back to like y'all, like I said, this shit is hard. <laughs> like literally, this shit is hard. And like I said, like it's like the work on your relationship with yourself and the way you interact with yourself and all of that, like that work never stops. And if it ever does, like I said, you know, hopefully you don't end up in injury or surgery or stuff like I've been doing, but it's like you end up right back in the pot and you're like, oh, we're, we're the lobster again. Shit. Um, so I we're think human. It's, <laughs> we're, human. we're literally human. It, it has been interesting, Alex, the number of people that as I've start, you know, kind of started to share a little bit more about this, the number of people that really thought that just because I'm in a body that's like so muscular and fit that I never like struggle with bad body image days or that I that I never like struggle with that. And I thought that was, like I said, it's like with each DM I get with that, I find that super fascinating because it's like, we don't just like arrive at a body shape or size and that's like, aha, we made it. Like now we don't struggle or now we we just love ourselves mm-hmm. 24, 7, 365. It's like uh, whoever's telling you that, like they, they need to go, right? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really, yeah, I don't know. Nobody I know doesn't ever have any oh. struggles. Um, and if they, if they say they don't, I, Bullshit. I don't know, maybe they're, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it's, and maybe it is, like, maybe it's just, like, a grass is greener thing that, you know, for so many people, it's like, oh, if I just lose this last five or ten pounds, like, everything's amazing. It's like, no, like, we're still probably dealing with similar things. We just might be in a smaller body while we do it, right? Um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know, it's like, do you happen to know any, are there any resources or books that you typically suggest to clients if they're, kind of struggling in this department of just like body image and, and stuff like that? I, you know, honestly, I haven't really, I haven't really come across any particular, um, books or resources or anything like that. Um, I mean, I do know, uh, people in our space that, that talk about this stuff a lot. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't really, I haven't really come across anything, at least from me looking around. I just don't like lately. I'm like, yo, if I have free time, I don't want to spend it in a book. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I hate that because it's like I, I used to yeah. be, but now it's like, like I said, I'm like, actually, I would like to completely dissociate. I would like to just play video games. <laughs> and I, <laughs> it's like all of the, there's been a lot of like Mother's Day memes. I feel like rolling around the past few days, but it's been like, hi, for Mother's Day, all I would like to do is like crawl in a hole and nobody talk to me and I just want pieces. <laughs> that, like that's like where I've been lately. And I'm like, yes, I actually. <laughs> yeah. One one thing I one thing I do want to um just maybe clarify or iterate. Um so one thing I think I think a lot of people um when we talk about this stuff like buying clothes or stuff like that um you know it's not it's not it's a financial thing, right? Too for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people don't have a lot of disposable income to be constantly buying new clothes and things like that. So, you know, I want to just, again, just kind of say like, hey, like if you're in that place where, you know, it's not in the cards for you to, you know, make um, 
a bunch of clothes purchases and things like that. We did talk about some things that you can do to make it a little bit more budget friendly. Um, but also keep in mind that like, if you're not fitting in things, right? Like if you're not feeling good in your clothes, at what cost is that to you? This constant daily uh, torment that you're going through, at what cost is that relative to maybe making a small investment, you know, into buying something, buying some clothes that make you feel good? I think that's where you kind of got to look at it because if, I don't know, for me personally, like if, if, it was, if it was bothering me so much that I was just not looking the way that I want to look and it was constant, you know, distress every single day, that would wear on me more than, hey, like, let me just put this on my credit card and we figure it out, right? Or, you know, at least, you know, knowing that I'm going to have this as a temporary and then, you know, we're going to get back to where, you know, I, I, I'm comfortable but at least sitting in this place where I can be comfortable in the temporary. I think too, it's like, there's so many people, like uh, there's a huge sector of like budget fashion, like influencers and like accounts like that. And so I think also Mm -hmm. just like seeking those out, if you are in that position of like, yo, okay, how do I like fall on a budget or make do? Because I think it's like, it, that would be very defeating for anybody to be like, I'm going to overhaul my entire wardrobe, right? And it's like, yeah. really just like, even if you are on a budget, it'd be like, hey, can we at least like get a few things that we yeah, feel really, really good items. in? Um, and because, yeah. I, I, you know, it's like, Chris and I were kind of talking about this the other day at the gym, but it's like, for me, I feel like it's like, clothing stuff. I'm just so hard. (laughs) Like I'm so hard on workout clothes. I'm so hard on like workout shoes. It's just because I'm like so active. Right. And so it's like, I feel like that's stuff that for me, I, you know, it's like over time, I just know that's going to be like a regular budget item of something that, um, I want that little bit of room in my budget that, Hey, you know, if Lululemon comes out with a new bra or, Oh, like born primitive drops this or whatever, you know, it's like having that freedom. And so, you know, again, I'm, uh, I am so glad you like brought this up. Cause it's like, I'm sure there are a lot of people that's like, yo, I would love to go buy all these high end brands or this and that, but like I got kids and especially, you know, with yeah. the cost of things. And so I think like, I think you nailed it on in terms of like, at what point do we also just have to say, hey, this is something I want to start budgeting for and then seeing where we can find, you know, where can we start creating that? And maybe it's not, you know, right here this month, but I think even just being like, hey, you know, my my wardrobe is no longer, you know, serving me. Is that something that I can kind of start replacing pieces? And I, I do think that it comes back to also, can we have stuff that's a little more timeless versus it's like, well, mm-hmm. hey, maybe a screaming neon orange, you know, sports bra or something, probably not not going to stand the test of time. But it's like having... Because even like, I need to just post a picture of like Charlie and I's wardrobe because people will be like, whoa, but it's like, Charlie's wardrobe is literally all black. It's like black, 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 black. And then like a couple, like neutrals, a couple like blues. Uh, But same thing. It's like, I always try to make all of my apparel fit together, kind of like that. And I do. I obviously I'm in my highlighter era. So we got a couple pieces. But (laughs) for the most part, you know, it's like I want stuff that's going to be timeless and and is going to uh, go together in that Mm -hmm. way. So um, like I said, I think this is probably a good time for me too. I want to like circle back and make another social media post of like, hey, if you're in a fit and athletic bodies, here's my favorite brands. Um, And really digging deep. And, uh, you know, I think that'd be kind of fun to do some polls and stuff too and see, hey, you know, where are places that, you know, maybe are a little bit more budget friendly and stuff like that. It's like, I think we could do so many podcasts uh, on that topic alone. So that might just be something cool that we can kind of like recon and circle back on. Um, Because I think in the doc, I feel like you had even thrown in the uh, option of like renting clothes. So obviously not for like fit wear, but for like even work stuff or dressier occasions, it's like uh, there's companies like rent, is it rent the runway? Rent, where you the, run, can, rent the runway. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Where you can, you, yeah. you can rent stuff rather than having to be like, yo, I'm going to purchase it. Uh, I think is, uh, I think it's huge. Yeah. 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 
trying to see. Um, I feel like that's all yeah. I got on this one. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were like went a little bit longer on that than I thought <laughs> we would, but I, I feel like we hit a lot of topics. So. Which is, yeah. Which Actually, is wait, wait. One more question was like, yeah. so if someone was, if someone was like dead set, like they didn't want to buy any more clothes, and they wanted to change their body to fit into the old clothes, um, yeah. What I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Ooh, I think it's just so hard because we have to remember that also there are times when like our body changes and it's not going to go back to the way that it was. So obviously like pregnancy Mm -hmm. is, you know, the biggie that would come to mind is it's like, man, I I just feel like that's hard if we are at that place where it's like, I want to fit back into these jeans. And kind of like you were saying earlier, it's like you're having this piece of clothing live rent free in your head that Maybe right now in your body, you feel really good in your skin, you know, all the things, but you have this, this goal of trying to fit back into something that maybe that's just left us. I think for a lot of people too, it'll be like, oh, I just want to get back to like what I weighed in college. And you're like, oh, like that's, that mm-hmm. ain't happening, mm-hmm. right? Or, or maybe it will, I don't know. Um, so I think, I feel like that's tough, man. And I'd love to hear your opinion, but it's like, I think that, I think that clothing has a lifespan and we we do also just have to respect of like, again, if you go from someone that you've never lifted or you've never like trained a ton right. and then you start lifting, well, yeah, you're going to gain muscle and you, you ain't going back to that, right? Um, so I feel yeah. like that's a very like nuanced question. I feel like, I feel like you yeah. got me there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear your I- thoughts. I, th- I think I think what you said earlier about <clears throat> you know that that idea that your your body is not a photograph right our bodies are gonna change I think that's something that we have to accept and we have to recognize that, like yeah I mean as as things change our body is gonna change um, you know it's just like prime example if you ha- if you didn't have kids before and you had kids your body is gonna be different um, it may or may not be look the way it did before you had kids. It may look different. It may look the same. Or, you know, if we start lifting, um, I see this a lot too with, with some, some people that like, you know, they never lifted before. And then they are like, well, none of my pants fit. And I'm like, well, that's cause you got a butt now, right? Like you got butt and thighs now. Like this shit ain't gonna fit now. Cause you got booty. So, I mean, you, you kind of have to kind of have to recognize that and expect that. I think, um, but you know, I think if you really do want to change and want to change your size and want to and and do want to uh, maybe you know get a, get into a smaller smaller frame, if you're in a good place to do that, I'm I support that, right? Like if you want to do it, do it. But I think where it gets dicey is if that's the only thing that you're constantly focused on is your size, and because that's where it becomes like, hey. Even if we get down to the size, are we going to be happy? Is that the only thing that's creating happiness? Is that the only thing that's why we're doing what we're doing? Because if that is, and we let's just say we don't get there, then what else you got? What's keeping you from jumping off this proverbial cliff here? Totally. Right? So... You know what I wasn't prepared for? <laughs> so like mm. when I went from, like I said, like I literally... If I wore like, I'm going to air quotes, like real bras, I was like, oh, double A, (laughs) like, like uh, flat chest, like my abs stuck out farther than my chest did uh, prior to, you know, getting boob implants. I was not prepared for how drastically different clothing, like the clothing and styles that I wear present day now that I do have a chest are completely different. So it's like, now that I do have a chest, everything has to be like form fitting. So even when we were modeling apparel, it's like baggy t-shirts just end up drowning on me. They end up like parachuting because it's like they go over your boobs, <laughs> but then like, um, it, like to, to points that are comedic. And so it's fascinating because it's like everything that basically looked good on me from a top perspective 
now that I have a chest is completely opposite and vice versa. Uh, so was, like I said, I just found it fascinating. And my sister-in-law loved me because basically we're the same like size and height. So whenever I like outgrow stuff or I decide I want to like part ways, she's like, yo, you, you got any, <laughs> uh, you got any goods for me this month? Uh, so she's always my person. Then like, yes, actually, you know, here we go. Uh, so she loved me <laughs> when I switched to uh, <laughs> having some tatas because yeah, it's like, I used to be down with like so many things that now I'm like, oops, that's a, that's a no. So like I said, you got to know your body. You got to know your body yeah. type. You got to know what looks good, what doesn't. Because uh, if you don't, it's a tough one. Well, um, mm-hmm. I think this was a bomb episode. I hope people yeah. love it. I think this was awesome. Um, I don't really have anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, was yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm boring today. I hope everybody, <laughs> this will be like belated because today is actually Mother's Day, but this won't come out for a few weekends after. Um, but I hope that everyone had a wonderful weekend. Uh, we would also just like, if there's ever topics that you would love to hear us riff on, if you could slide over to the Live Big, Lift Big podcast handle, like letter it doesn't matter the post, like either slide in the DMs, hop to the comment section. But if there's ever something you would love to hear us riff on, uh, get up in our stuff. Let us know. Like we, <laughs> we would love to hear it. But that's all we got for this week. Um, later. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>